The goniometer, also called a phase scope or a vector scope, is one of the few meters that I always use when I'm mastering. The others being a VU meter and a LUFS meter and the occasional use of a spectrum analyzer. The goniometer shows information about the stereo image in a quite intuitive way. It can be very useful both while mixing and mastering. In this video we will have a look at three situations where a goniometer is very helpful. My name is Thomas and I have been working professionally with mastering for more than 20 years. I run a mastering company together with Sofia and on this channel we try to put out information that could be useful for you who are into music production. I will be showing the examples in this video using the mastering starter pack for Reaper. This is a configuration package for Reaper that I created to make it easier to practice mastering. With this you can, for example, easily switch between your master, the original mix and a reference track and have everything loudness matched for easy comparison. There's a link in the description if you want to have a look at the starter pack. The starter pack itself is completely free, although you will need to have a Reaper license as well. First, let's have a look at how the goniometer works. On the screen of the goniometer there is a dot that can move around and leave a trace. And the dot is controlled by the audio signal. Signal in the left channel will make the dot move diagonally between the upper left and the lower right. And signal in the right channel will make the dot move diagonally between the upper right and the lower left. If I feed the goniometer with a center panned mono signal, then the signal will be equally loud in the left and right channel and the dot will move straight up and down. This vertical movement corresponds to the M signal or the mid signal when using MS processing. If the left and right signal is out of phase with each other, that is, they are identical but have opposite polarity, then the dot will move left and right. And this horizontal movement corresponds to the S or the side signal in MS processing. Make sure to watch the video from Sofia on MS processing that is released at the same time as this video. There you will get some tips on mid-side processing for mastering. In many mixes, the key elements will be panned to the center. The kick and snare and bass and vocals will generally leave an imprint on the goniometer that is mostly vertical. Panned instruments will contribute to the width of the mix and will add more left and right movement on the goniometer. Ambience and reverb and other more spacious elements will add more out-of-phase content and this will add even more horizontal movement on the goniometer. So a normal stereo mix with a full and wide stereo image will often be like a fuzzy ball that is taller than it is wide. Here I am using a free plugin from Flux that is called Stereo Tool. And there is also a goniometer available as a JSFX in Reaper. If you're using another DAW, then there is a big chance that there is a goniometer available there as well. Look for a goniometer or a phase scope or a vector scope and you will probably find it. So let's have a look at the three situations when a goniometer will be extra helpful. The first situation is checking the stereo balance. If the mix is tilting to the left or to the right due to an error, then you can often spot this on the goniometer. Check for the direction of the center panned elements. These should make an up and down movement, but if the mix is tilting, then they will move more diagonally. You can then assess if this is on purpose or if it is something that you should fix by adjusting the gain on the individual left and right channels. Another situation is to detect limiting and clipping. When a stereo signal is loud and peak limited, then you will get the characteristic diamond shape on the goniometer. If clipping is used, then the diamond will have sharp edges as well. If you are using a more aggressive type of peak limiting, then the character will be more like clipping and you will start to see the sharper edges on the goniometer. Limiting and clipping can also be seen on the waveform of the audio file, but the goniometer makes it easier to recognize the kind of peak limiting that is being used. A bonus tip here is that it's often easier to notice audible distortion from clipping and limiting if you listen to the side signal. 
So in the starter pack, I just press the difference button here and I will hear the side signal. And here you can hear the crackling sound of clipping much more easily. The diamond shape is inevitable if you want to create a loud master that is competing with most commercial music today. So there's nothing wrong with the diamond shape, but it's generally not the thing to aim for if you are looking for a more natural and dynamic sound. And for certain genres like classical music or other acoustic recordings, then I will usually try to avoid peak limiting altogether. The third use of the goniometer is to detect overly wide elements in the mix. The goniometer can sometimes show large horizontal movement, and this can be an indication that you have some problems with mono compatibility. If you, for example, have bass instruments in stereo, then the goniometer can be helpful to see if the bass is too wide. Wide bass is not a problem in itself, although it might cause some problems when cutting vinyl records. This is easily fixed by reducing the low end in the side signal and the, the cutting engineer will take care of this. But there will be problems though if the music is dependent on the stereo information. If you are missing important musical content when you are listening in mono, then you have a problem with mono compatibility. On a goniometer, you will usually notice this if certain notes or instruments seem to be more wide than tall. Press the mono button and listen to make sure that nothing musically important is disappearing. It is best to do this already while mixing, since it's usually too late to fix mono compatibility issues at the mastering stage. So these are some uses of the goniometer. Do you have any additional things that you use the goniometer for? Let us know in the comments. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.